some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a discussion over Decorum Moving Out, which is the first expansion to Decorum. I don't know why I said first, because I have no idea if they plan on doing more uh, content for Decorum, but this is going to be kind of an interesting review, because... Uh, I have an initial review over Decorum, and it was after kind of a mini-series that my, well, now ex-wife and I were doing together. Um, and we ended up cutting that series just because Decorum became so, such a burden to play. But, I've always admired the game, um, and it's a game that I've shown people tons and tons of times and I've continued playing the two-player scenarios or showing people the three-player and four-player because it is such an uh, unique type of puzzle game that is unlike anything else out there. So whenever they announced an expansion, I was like, well, wait a minute. Wasn't there supposed to be an app that the game like was going to, um, that the game was supposed to have? And then I went to Gen Con and talked to Ben, who is the, uh, like, the founder of Floodgate. And he was like, dude, it's out. And I'm like, oh, great. So, checked out the app, and I've played the, um, I've played Decorum with the app. And so I'm also going to be talking about the app in this review as well. As well as talking about the, the expansion. So, uh, I'll do the app at the end, because this is a review over Decorum moving out. And I'm conflicted on this expansion. So in terms of an expansion to Decorum, I think this is a really cool, unique idea. It basically adds a 20 new scenarios that kind of keep the house static, but keeping the core game the same. So you're given your conditions that you have to meet uh, that are obviously going to appear conflicting with others' uh, conditions. And you now have cars, different types of cars that will have specific rules within those conditions. I'm going to try and do this without spoilers. But the main thing is that once you set up the house, the house is now static. You don't interact with the house by adding a new, because you're not moving in together. You're not decorating the house anymore. So the only thing that changes is that you keep the wall colors. But after you set up the house, you remove all the other pieces that were not there. So now you have new actions that allow you to swap positions uh, that are compatible. So you can swap wall hangings with wall hangings. And you can move stuff into the cars. And the cars, ha uh, the cars have wild spaces that anything can go in. But your conditions are gonna align with, hey, you know, you can't have something in uh, the clunker. You know, you so like the uh, positioning of something can't be above another thing because like the cars have different rows, um, and the positioning of the cars matters based off the setup that you're given. It also adds boxes that uh, can be moved around and manipulated in some way, and uh, bubble wrap that you place pieces in that will again all align with your conditions so it definitely adds more content to decorum without being like and i like the fact that it's moving out i think with the stipulation of what the game is having it be cars and stuff and them thematically tying like oh hey you know you guys figured out how to live together well now it's time to move and moving adds its own stressor <laughs> if anyone's ever moved with a significant other then it becomes it cannot, I mean, it's, it can be a huge pain if you're dealing with packing and relocating and, like, actually the act of moving to a new place. So, I think the theme is done really well, and the way it's um, implemented in the game is also done really well. But, where I'm conflicted with this expansion, and this has been a weird running theme with some expansions lately. I've had the same feeling with Heat, the Heavy Rain expansion, and I had the same feeling with the Mundo expansion for World Wonders, in that there seems to be some dis weird design decisions. And I kind of see why they did it here. Uh, one, Floodgate is a lot smaller than Days of Wonder, and, um, oh, whoever did World Wonders, Arcane? I can't remember, no, it's not, it's not Arcane. Uh, it's, it's a different company. 
Anyway, um, but the 20 scenarios that you get in the expansion are only for two players, and there aren't any scenarios for three or four. Which is odd, because the base game says it is two to four, so it's weird to make an expansion for two, only two players. Because, I'll have to grab my, my box right here. Because, I mean, yes, I've always kind of assumed that Decorum was meant to be a two-player game. Because in the base game, you have 20 scenarios, I think. 20, yeah, you have 20 scenarios for two players. But you only have uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight. You have ten scenarios for. Well, it shows four players, but you can play with three, and then a, and then you just distribute out the conditions of of the fourth. So it's essentially a two two four player game. So whenever you buy an expansion, expecting more content for a game that is two to four, but you're only given two player scenarios, it feels like they kind of, you know, uh, cut corners to make an expansion. Um, and I definitely see why, because the three, I imagine most people play this at, at two. Like, I mean, actually I can, I can look that up. On Board Game Geek, Decorum says you best at two, um, 81% of people say it's best at two. And then 60% recommended at three and 50% recommended at four. Only one person said this was best at three and 12% uh, and twelve of people, so four people said this was best at four. Um, so obviously it's meant for two. And maybe they just went with the data and was like, okay, no one's really playing our three or four player scenarios, so we'll just make an expansion for two. Um, now granted, I love this at three and four. Like, I, I love the roommate idea. I think the scenarios they came up with are, are awesome. I guess they might have went with more theme of significant others moving out instead of roommates moving out. Because typically, if you have roommates and you're moving out, you're not moving out together. You're most likely going your own separate ways. Um, but again, I can understand if people who have bought the game thought that, oh great, it's an expansion and I love playing this with my friends, and they buy the expansion and they can only play it at two, I think that that is going to irk some people uh, more so than than not. Uh, it, again, it's just a weird decision. Now, I primarily do play this at two, so it doesn't really impact me at all. So the 20 extra scenarios, I really enjoy. And I kind of like the way that they packed it. So now, the way it's packed, whoop, it comes in just this, this box here, and you just pull out the, the scenarios, and they're all just lumped together like that. Uh, it makes a small footprint. It allows, I mean, because the other, the base game had all these different envelopes. Um, there was no reason to have the individual envelopes, so... Again, probably it's maybe a cost-cutting measure to not have the individual envelopes and the scenarios packed and not including a third three and four player scenario, but you kind of get more content in this small expansion. I mean, not more content than the base game because you have all the acrylic tiles, but with the, with the cars, with the boxes, the bubble wrap, it's, I mean, it's not an expensive expansion either way, but if you do play this at three or four primarily and rarely at two, well, then this expansion is not for you at all. So other than that, I think that the scenarios are great. Uh, I have not done them all, but it is decorum just with different conditions. That's really what it is. So if you don't like decorum, you're not going to like this expansion. Like it doesn't fix anything. It still has the, the cards with the conditions on them. Uh, you still have to do the actions like of of moving and painting and and positioning and all that uh and give vague hints on you know love it hate it indifferent i flavor it up like uh like when people do something it's just like oh man i'm just gonna oh man i'm gonna beat you to death with that lamp which is my version of i hate it um so you can role play a little bit without still giving just going i love it i hate it i'm indifferent you know uh, you still have heart to hearts and give condition tokens. So, or not condition tokens, give your conditions back and forth. So it's more content 
just again i do like the added aspect of separate rooms really is what the cars are um so yeah that is my review on moving out um so on a scale of one to ten i've actually bumped decor decor was a seven for me but i bumped it up to an eight because it's a game i do show a lot of people um, and I've learned that how hard or difficult a scenario is, is kind of dependent on which condition you decide to start out. Like, I've had many games where, uh, the one I chose to start with is, like, actively feels like the opposite. So you're kind of going in circles with, uh, the other player. And that can kind of indicate how difficult a scenario is. But I still show it to a lot of people. It's not that big of a deal if you don't get it. Um, now, with the way the app is right now, if you do mess up or someone misinterprets a condition, like even in the expansion, and you go, you both say you're fulfilled, but you're not, you are kind of out of the scenario, unless, because you can't really replay it. The app is supposedly supposed to fix that, but we'll get there in a sec. However, still, you now have 40 two-player scenarios, and still, you're three and four players, so I'm going to give the decor moving out expansion still an eight. I think it's an awesome expansion, especially if you have exhausted your 20. Now, I've redone scenarios because I played, it has been such a long gap that I can go to scenario one and not remember what the other person has to do. Um, and I assume that the expansion is going to be the exact same way. So yeah, I think the moving out expansion is going to be an eight for me uh, personally because it's still, I play this primarily at two. Now, let's talk about the app. Um, I'm not going to be overly harsh on the app because this is not a company that makes app games. I think they made it in-house. I'm hoping I'm corrected if, if not. It feels like they made it in-house. Uh, I kind of wish they outsourced and had Lucky Duck or someone else make it because it clearly says app version 1.0.5 build 1. Um, the app is not at all what was described to me and apparently what was described or promised to a lot of people. Currently, all the app is, is a daily scenario generator and you only get one. So, um, if you're, if you bought this game expecting a infinite form of, of scenarios once you've exhausted everything in the base game and once you've exhausted everything in the expansion, um... You, you don't have that right now. So basically what I'm saying is this review for the app is kind of going to be way, things that I would like to see. One, um, randomly generated scenarios. Right now it's literally join game, host game, or continue game. Um, and you have a daily scenario. Once you do it, you can't use the app until the next day. Uh, which I mean, the, the, the uh, scenarios that are generated are good. Um, and whenever you are in a scenario, whenever you have a heart-to-heart, -heart, you can, like, it, the app will keep the round tracker for you. And then it's like, oh, okay, we both hit end turn. Um, now, you know, it's time for a heart-to-heart. -heart, and we click a condition, click share, and it gets sent to um, it gets sent to the person on their phone. So that's neat. Uh, whenever it's running the scenario it, that you're playing, it is, it is fine. But there's a couple things. One, as of right now, I don't think it allows for three to four player scenarios. So again, they should have just made Decorum as a two player game. I, do, I don't know why if they're now with the expansion and the app, if they're focusing on two players, why they even included three and four player scenarios. Like almost seems like a mistake on the initial design where it's like, oh shit, we should have just made it two players. Um, Cause it takes a lot of design effort to make four conditions that aren't gonna break the game and still make them interesting and fun to play um and i don't know if it was a miss hit on my end or if it was an app mistake but whenever i shared one of the conditions it showed the same thing twice so i don't know if i shared a different one and the app just messed up or if i accidentally shared the same one either way if let's say it was the latter where i shared the same thing twice it that shouldn't happen like, if you've shared a scenario with the other person, the app should know that and not even let you select it to share again. Because there's no undo button in the app, which also kind of sucks. And this is all 
uh, things that they could add to the app. So I'm kind of wanting, I'm not trying to be critical of the app, but I want, I want these things included because otherwise you're going to piss off a lot of people because they, they're expecting an app with the game. So an undo button, or if you're like, oh, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to share that one with you. And I see why they probably don't have one because it's a game of imperfect information that if you share one and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to, and they already read it, then they kind of get an extra heart to heart. But there's nothing stopping you from just saying it anyway. So if I miss, if it's like, oh, hey, you sent the same one twice. Oh, okay, well, let me hit undo and go back and reshare it. Um, I've had games where someone accidentally hit the heart to heart button and it just like we were like in round three because you can have an early heart to heart and it's like, oh, okay, no, right now you're at round 16. It's like, oh, okay, so I guess, and there's no undo button for that, even though we both didn't share anything. So an undo button, a way to not share the same heart to heart uh, or the same condition. Um, there needs to, I mean, there absolutely still needs to be ways to just generate one. Daily scenarios are cool. I think that needs to be kept, but either no one's playing this game daily, and so you're just kind of wasting a lot of scenarios whenever, like, it's just like, oh, hey, we're playing Decorum, and we happen to have a daily scenario we can do. Uh, also, whenever you do the daily scenario, you can't do it again. Uh, or maybe you can. I guess I've, I have I couldn't click on it whenever I, I went back. Um, let me pull up the app right now. There we go. Um, yeah, so you have to have someone host it, and then it's only the French scenario, or this one is the dismal French classic. One thing that I really, really think they need to add is all the scenarios from the game in the app. So, uh, the, I guess the two-player ones. Uh, clearly add the expansion whenever they get to that, but the 20 two-player scenarios need to be able to be selectable. Like, just have, a, just have a separate page you can go to, like Decorum game, Board Game Scenarios. You click on that and it shows all 20, you select that. And then, since you're hosting it, like, you just put in the code um, for that scenario, and then everyone joins. And now it's like, okay, there's you and another person. Um, and then I think something else that I was, I brought it up to, to them once before when they were designing the app. But I really think that once everyone hits fulfilled or loses the game, there is a snapshot or an example picture of what the house looks like fulfilled. Because that is so important to understanding how these, these conditions are. Because you can, I've had four player games of this where a condition I shared with someone, we completely took it in an opposite direction. So we had to go to a separate room to talk about what that condition meant because it was just so ambiguous that it's like, I, I don't know, I, this is how I took it. And in a game like this, you need to understand clearly what your conditions are. So it'd be nice to be like, oh, it's fulfilled. Hey, we're all fulfilled, cool, continue. And then it goes to the next thing and shows you what the house looks like. So you can kind of picture reference because I know a lot of people, and I've seen this on many, many forums, are, have stated certain scenarios are impossible. And I have played, uh, hell, even one of the daily scenarios where I was given a condition and I was like, this seems like it contradicts one of my scenarios so much. And then when it's being randomly generated in a, in a very alpha version app, it, you feel like, okay, maybe the app just messed up. And if, if after you're done with the scenario, whether you won or lost, and it showcases, hey, here's what the actual house is supposed to look like. And you can look at where you're at and be like, oh, okay, yeah, all the conditions, there it is, that's how, that's how that is. Um, that would be just so helpful to add. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much my thoughts. I mean, I guess the three and four player isn't in the app right now. Um, I like the fact that you continue a game in the app and come back and continue playing. And uh, the daily scenarios are awesome. Need to add in base game. Uh, need to add in a reference check. And an undo button. I think that's pretty much it for the app. Because I did see a lot of forums out there of people saying they, they bought the game expecting the app and the app took a while to come out 
And whenever it was out, it wasn't anything like what they were told, which was basically infinite scenarios or randomly generated scenarios, which I guess it technically is, but for daily. And it's like, it would be nice to sit down and play Decorum after you've done all the inbox scenarios and just new game. Boom, here's a new scenario. New game. Boom, here's a new scenario. So you can play multiples uh, at once instead of being like, oh, okay, let me you know, set up decorum and we have one daily scenario. All right, we're done. Let's put all this up. We wanted to play more, but unfortunately we only have one scenario to do. And I understand that they can add all this to the game. Um, I hope that they're not just gonna put this out and be like, all right, well, that's enough of that. We gave them an app, there you go. I hope that they are actively working on, um, on things to improve on the app. These are just some ideas that I have that I hope to see in in the game, but I'm not really docking them so much for the app right now. But it's it's definitely a work a work in progress for the app. One because it's also a web app, which I think is fine. I think that makes it easier to support. Um, and and yeah, I mean I'm not docking them for not having the expansion since this just came out, but. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement with with what the app is. I'm not even gonna rate the app, that's just something I wanted to talk about because I got this expansion at the same time I found out the app was out. So so yeah, um, other than that, that's my thoughts on Decorum moving out and the application for Decorum. Let me know what you think of all that in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.